just a, a, a whet your appetite, hang out together, and share some, discover a little bit about what you're all thinking, resources you have, and it would be an opportunity to build on it later, too. But before lunch comes, I thought we'd spend some time sharing what you all are talking about, what you discovered about your different ideas and resources at your tables. Um, and who wants to go first? Our idea is to um, create what we call a community kitchen or a learning kitchen. And the reason why I call it a learning kitchen is because we want to um, bring middle school and high school students from Muskegon Public and Muskegon Heights and Muskegon Catholic. And maybe, you know, at the table this discussion went on to why not open it up to all of the schools in Muskegon County. And the reason why my focus was on Muskegon Heights and Muskegon Public was because that's what this grant was all about. But um, uh, so we would create a learning kitchen where the kids would come in they would actually maybe use some of the local retailers like Dufflers and Plums and take them to grocery stores or teach them how to do a, like a little mini thing on how to grocery shop. They would plan the menu. Um, we would take them on day trips to farmers markets and to farmers so they could see what's out there. Um, and then they would plan the menu, they would cook and they would serve it to um, um, the Muskegon Heights and the downtown Muskegon community in need of um, a hot meal. We do that right now at Sacred Heart Church, but it's not a possibility for us to stay at Sacred Heart Church and um, do this whole learning process because the kitchen is being overused already. So we need to have um, a commercial kitchen where we can bring the students in to do this. So not only do, do they learn, but um, it creates the manpower to actually make all this happen because the kids are actually doing the work. And then we want to include um, Baker College Culinary Arts and maybe use some of their students as interns to come in and help with the learning process. Um, of course, we've got to get integrated into the schools to get the teachers and the principals and everybody on board with the whole program so that they get included as part of the curriculum so the kids come on. Um, of course, we're going to need more funders. <laughs> because um, this amount of money from um, Healthy Muskegon is going to be just a small part of it and we're going to need more than that to get it going. But um, And then include faith-based um, organizations like Love Incorporated and Muskegon Rescue Mission by, um, um, for, for example, Love Incorporated has a, a great um, process of how they um, screen clients and I, I hate the word screen but they actually sit down and talk to them and they know what's going on with these people and we could actually um, you know have the students during the day and in the evening offer parent classes so that the parents can come in and learn um, how to cook and um, how to use um, healthy foods and that kind of thing and maybe even um, show them how they can use the foods that they're getting from food pantries um, to make them more healthy um, and I mentioned farmers day trips, training schools, um, involve some of the clubs, 4-H, um, um, the YMCA in the summertime, have them come in with some summer programs. I mentioned the retailers. Um, Gordy mentioned that we could actually, um, by operating a commercial kitchen, we could actually um, have the students, um, like for instance when squash is in season and there's so much squash out there, we could teach them how to um, can it or freeze it or whatever and they could actually um, learn entrepreneurship and they could actually go and sell it at some of the, the markets or something like that themselves. So they're actually creating a, their own business, showing them how to create their own business. Um, and then we talked about farmer's market. Um, suppliers, of course, Feed in America, USDA, and then um, local farmers, um, touching base with them to um, get them on board so that, you know, when whatever the the vegetable or fruit is in season that they share it with us so that we can teach the students how to use it. Um, I guess that's it. Did I forget anything? The um, children making the dinner for their parents too so that the parents oh, yeah. get involved. Yeah. I thought that was a good idea. And then um, once, you know, like, you know, the whole logistics of the program would ha is still have to be worked out um, and that would have to be done with the schools, of course. But whether um, the children are coming um, once a week or they're coming four times a week uh, in one month whatever the curriculum is set up for having an evening where um, their parents come and they actually cook and serve to their parents so their parents see what their children have learned and and taste how good the food tastes that their children have just made 
We have three people here at our table that would actually like to apply for the grant, and we kind of talked about um, how we could connect together. Um, also, we have people at our table who are resources. So Andrea is like a head start, and she's actually um, at one of uh, Kids Blue Basket location, Rose the King, how she could help us with giving parents as well as kids nutrition um, information. And Jackie is, her goal is to help health uh, care, I'm sorry, daycare providers learn nutrition to, um, to kind of help with the kids that they're um, feeding. Dana's here from um, Public Health, and they are applying for two grants, but you're not sure what exactly. Yeah. What exactly. And Gloria's here from CCD as a consultant. They're looking at revitalizing the Mesquite Heights um, Farmers uh, Market as well as revitalizing the community gardens at Martin Luther King and Edgewood. Um, I'm here with KFB and we're looking at providing healthier food in our sack suppers and so we connected a lot how we work together. So uh, Gloria and I could work together on community gardens and helping her out with access and equipment. So we would need community gardens. Uh, farmers market would be a great spot uh, to also uh, use the community garden produce as well as um, selling it. We need educators. Um, distributors, um, farm to school program or farm to KFB to school program. Uh, we need training for um, ambassadors to help um, give the kids a little bit more about why they want to eat the tomato and also help the parents. So um, your community garden, uh, community kitchen would be great because we could train the parents how to use the healthy product and change it into recipes that they would like. A lot of times they know about the vegetables and fruits, but they don't know how they can utilize it and make their cultural dishes. And so that would be a great idea. Um, Faith-based organizations, uh, neighborhood groups, and food pantries. So we didn't have like one specific project. We just saw how we could work together as resources and um, collaborate on grants. Yay. Um, our goal is to become a food hub. Um, the target area that we're interested in would be the inner city um, communities of Muskegon and Muskegon Heights. The vehicle that we would use would be um, nonprofit organizations such as West Michigan Therapy and Pathfinders. Um, we are also going to um, go into collaborations, hopefully, with Eaton Gardens, and that would be in, in the growing of vegetables and fish um, uh, with controlled agri indoor agriculture you more or less grow 365 days a year so we think that we can produce quality foods at a lower cost because we will not have a lot of the trucking costs in there um, local resources would be MSU extension um, the education community Faith-based organizations are very important to us. Um, farm garden, gardener programs, uh, Grand Valley, and health organizations. So, uh, one of the new resources that we're looking at would be uh, using some type of science-based educational tools for children. We like to educate them in how foods that they should be eating and how to actually grow foods. And we're talking about from the, the um, bottom up. Um, we have a food pantry in place, and we also have a community kitchen. Some of the activities that we're looking at is starting out would be training. It's very, very important. Community gardens, um, getting those back established. And we also would like to do some composting. Um, we also are interested in bringing the farmer's market in Muskegon Heights back together. And there's a couple of brands that we know of that's already out there that could possibly happen. 